beep, 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 beep. Today is July 26th. And believe it or not, we have more breaking news from the AI world. News that's going to change everything, perhaps, about Google's entire search engine infrastructure and the way it makes money. So Google is being very much impacted by this technology, and you will be too. I can't even tell you how much time this will save you if you learn how to embrace it. So what happened was a company called OpenAI, and you know OpenAI, it's the one that created ChatGPT. So OpenAI announced yesterday that they have created SearchGPT. And SearchGPT, <laughs> they're so clever with their names. We can't tell it's the same one, right? SearchGPT is, it's right now in a prototype, but it does this AI search feature instead of regular search. So to demo this, I am going to come back here to the regular old Google. Now you can see here, I have put in Google AI enabled search engine. That's up here. That is the title that I put in there and pressed search. What Google has done before this happened was it knows that we don't Google very well. We don't query very well. So it tries to answer some of the things that we might be thinking of with these quick reference pieces. Then we have the sponsors, right? So the people who are paying to be up there. Then again, it is trying to aggregate the things that we might be asking about and looking for. And then we have articles. And to get this information, we have to click on each one of them, go into there and gather our information. We don't know what they are until we get in there. We have a little preview, but we have to click, go. Click, go, assemble all the information ourselves Again, Google here is trying to say, hey, you might want to focus on these things and this may be what you're trying to talk about. But as you can see, I would have to go into each one. Some of them are not even relevant. Some of them are old. Some of them are ads. And we just don't know. You just have to click and look at each one. What OpenAI is aiming to do is to create, use its chat gpt -ness to look things up, give you references, and then bring back a report that is written rather than having you go and get each one. Now, there is already a tool that I have been using that blows this away. It's called Perplexity. So I am going to paste the exact same name into Perplexity and click Go. Now, it's worth knowing that I pay the $20 a month upgrade for Perplexity. So if you use the free version, which is amazing, you're going to have to take more steps than I am because it does multiple steps at once. I don't actually know what it does for my $20, but it works really fast and it's totally worth it for me. So AI enabled search engine, and I'm just going to click go. Now what it's doing, you see right there, it's researching and then it is bringing things together. Then it is pulling things out and it's answering the question and giving a whole bunch of references. So based on the search results, here are several things. Here are several companies. Here are some key features. The ability to provide direct answers and summaries, not just links, real-time information. So you see, we search for the exact same thing but instead of giving me a whole bunch of links where I have to go and gather the information and assimilate the information, hope that I find the right information that somebody's already written it, it writes it on the go for me. So instead of me having to make these lists, get the most recent, it is going to find ways to do that for me. And I can ask a follow-up. So key features is uh, natural language. So you ask what you want to know. Ability to provide direct answers, not just links. Real-time information. Yes, it is real-time information. It is the most up-to-date information for the most part. Not perfect. But yesterday, OpenAI announced Search GPT. That is nowhere in the Google search. I would have to make sure that it was choosing the most up-to-date information in the Google search and, and click on things within the last 24 hours, this didn't even show up on the front page, but it already knows that it's in there because it does real time. Google itself, knowing that this, it, the writing is on the wall, 
has something called an SGE, Search Generative Experience. It is in beta right now, and I try it, and I think it's still in beta, but I use it, and it'll usually do an AI-generated summary at the top. I don't know why it didn't do it for this one, but most of the time, it'll do an AI summary at the top. Then it starts talking about some of the other companies, and it talks about challenges and considerations. So we still have the problem of factual accuracy, maybe, addressing copyright and content attributions concern, balancing AI generation. So it gives me all this information. It is writing this on the fly based on my search. Overall, it represents a significant evolution on how fi people find and interact with information. So let me ask a follow-up. What? Let's see. First, before I do that, let's see what it says. Maybe I should ask a follow-up. How does Google's generative search AI, remember this just came out, it's gotten mixed reviews. I've been using it for a while in the beta, but it's, it's, it's been out there. How does perplexity AI maintain content context across multiple queries? What makes Bing AI? Bing is from Microsoft, so it's making its own. And can AI search engines handle non-standard speech effectively? I don't know. That sounds like a good question. So when I click on it, it is now going to add to my information. It is, again, searching these things all for me straight from the web and giving me the references about where it's getting the information. It is organizing those answers. And then it gives me where it found this information. Specialized projects and tools, voice the AI-based application translates unintelligible sounds, machine learning and deep learning. So it's giving me all this information. So let's say that I wanted to ask a follow-up and say, how does, I'll put the thing there, search engines help, how does an AI-enabled search engine help administrative assistant in the financial investing field? I work a lot with financial investors, with, with money managers and things like that. So how can it help that? Now, what it's gonna do is research, again, for these specific things. And it is pulling information from the web, giving me references, and it is asking specific things. I'm pretty sure that the steps it's taking all at once, and it's doing one, two, three, and multiple things, is because I'm paying the extra $20 a month. Not really sure. I haven't undone the pro button on this. But any way you look at it, it's going to give you great information. So it is gathering su sufficient information and just answering my questions. And again, it is telling me where I can get the answers and how I can get the answers. Enhancing research and data analysis, data retrieval and analysis, improving customer service. These are all things that it's writing on the fly based on the information, going to every link, going to every site, and summarizing it and using AI to add to it. So here's in summary, we're getting to the end there. And you can share that one part, you can rewrite it, you can copy it, you can edit the query, all kinds of things. What else can you do there? View the sources, tell it that it didn't do a good job, delete it, whatever. Let's see, let's go back to how does an AI-enabled search engine help graduate students? All right, now it's giving me a few other ideas. So it's processing that real quick. And then I'm going to click here and say, how does it help other professions? All right, I'm going to let it write, finish that up. As you can see, when I scroll over stuff, it'll, it'll pull things down and give us more information. AI enabled search engines. So it is now going to add to this database of information. I did this the other day with a group who does a lot with legislation. And they had to go into each bill, search them, find the topics aggregate the information, and put it all in a list. What I did was ask the perplexity, this is the one I'm using right now, 
say you know, what are the recent bills this was for lawyers trial lawyers what are the recent bills in louisiana that affect trial lawyers and instead of somebody spending hours doing that it just put it together in my case one of the things i ask about a lot is i do research on the latest surveys on productivity or email usage or things like that and i used to have to go and just put in one of the latest studies change the date look click on each one and now it'll just summarize it for me so i'm going to go back to my search engine now we have a whole bunch of professions that it may help with and i'm going to of course share this link too with you so that you can see what's going on other things we can do here is search for videos over here on the right search for videos and search for images that go to it and you can always also generate an image now i love this sometimes it doesn't go well but i'm going to generate an illustration that may go along with what we're talking about. So it's actually gonna use AI to look at all the topics we're talking about and generate some kind of an illustration. That's kind of a bad one, but that's okay. Let me generate another image. Let's go with a photograph. There we go. We have a person who is using a computer. Maybe they're focused on the financial things. And I'm gonna generate another image. We will try the diagram just for fun. So if I were writing a report or a blog post, I would already have the way to have a graphic, the way to have some kind of addition to what I'm looking for, and I'm not clicking on each one. Across the top here, I can add it to a collection. So if I'm doing a lot of research on AI search engines or other AI topics, I could create a collection and keep it all under one roof. Here's a magic thing. You see, like right next to me, right right there it says convert to page this is new maybe within the last month and it is now creating pretty much a wikipedia page that answers the question that i was looking for and so now it's a report it is a report that has headings it's organizing itself and putting it together for me so that i can share it all the sources are there all the references all the way it put everything together is great and i can check things out here rather than again having to aggregate all this stuff myself this has saved me so much time when it comes to some of the research i do you can also now that you have this report you can add sections to it you can query it and you can share this with people so that they can add their own searches and use this as the basis. So if you're a teacher, you could put together a page with references and places that people can go and kind of an idea about a new topic and let people play around with that. Now let's see if we could suggest it. We can add another section or change the headlines, change the graphics, all kinds of things. You can add media and it's gonna add it automatically and then give you the reference where it came from amazing so now let's see let me insert a section here and i could write about something like what is the future of search with ai and it's going to add to that piece we could also now that we have it in this format we could come back to it and say explain it to me like i'm a kid and it will explain it to you like you're a kid and it would let you interact with this, rewrite this, reorganize this, change the tone of this, just like you would do in ChatGPT. So now when I publish this, there we go. I'm going to copy the link. I can share it. I can copy the link and I'm going to come over here and paste the link and go. And now I have a page that I can share with everybody. And let me add the media there, generate an image, see if we get a better one here. But it's basically a Wikipedia page with a report that will prep you for whatever you need. Before, when I talked about perplexity, I was really just focusing on the fact that it's current information, that it is researched and it gives you the sources and it aggregates the information. But I didn't really get into the 
reporting features and the way it can pull information together and shortcut all that web research you've done. And this to me is going to change everything. So like I said, Google has one. It has gotten very mixed reviews. I've been using it for a while. Microsoft has one and Perplexity is one. And then Search GPT just was announced as the prototype yesterday. So this is where we're going. And the way it's gonna disrupt Google is, mm, there are my ads. Mm -mm, we might not need ads. All the SEO that y'all have been working on, yes, it's gonna still be needed, but people now don't need to go to your site necessarily to get the answers because the answers will be given to them in a report, in a summary that they don't have to do. So it changes so much. I thank you for being with me to try this new technology out, and I really hope it helps you. Until next time, this is Beth Z, your nerdy best friend, saying, nerd on. <laughs>